Hello viewers and welcome to Intriguing Megalithic Perspectives. This is a quick video about how to soften granite without of course tossing it back into a volcano. This is the process that is now possible with the new technologies of the last two decades and this video is the illustrated concept of that tech and the process step by step. The first two minutes is a brief refresher course on the periodic table of elements which are the ingredients of our blue, white, and green planet. Science is the starting point to understanding the manipulation of granite, so please watch it. The rest of this video is the process and the tech needed to soften granite. So grab a beverage, kick back, and enjoy. Most of us took chemistry back in high school, and some of us went further with it in college, and I want to refresh your curious mind of some crazy facts that still blow my mind to this very day, regarding the periodic table of elements. Perhaps you remember these, perhaps you don't, but here goes. Eleven elements in the periodic table make up about 99% of the Earth's crust and atmosphere. That's right. Out of the 90 or so naturally occurring elements, 11 of them make up 99% of the world as we know it and can see and touch. And oxygen is nearly half of this, and silicon is about a quarter of the total quantity of these 11 elements. I know, it's mind-blowing. We live on an oxygen and silicon world. And quartz is a compound of silicon and oxygen, SiO2, and is the second most abundant mineral compound on the Earth's continental crust behind Felspar, which is a conglomerated rock group containing about one half of the other nine remaining common elements. Also, quartz exhibits a natural harmonic frequency as its compound of a metalloid and a reactive non-metal, and that measurable frequency will vary under pressure, the angles, and the influences of gravity. Do you remember these crazy facts from your former chemistry class? And when you see examples of apparently softened stones from around the world, they are always rich in quartz. They are granite, rhyolite, or andesite, or other common igneous, usually intrusive, rocks. Over the past several centuries, everything about various granites have been classified, categorized, and studied. It has even been found that granite has a positive grain, an actual quartz charge and direction within the stone. This is due to the spinning of the earth at the time of the slow cooling of the stone and the added charge to the polarity over the past 300 million years of rotation. As one of the oldest and hardest stones in the world, granite still has some secrets that we can only solve via the most sensitive equipment available today. But until recently, granite and the quartz in the granite could not be tested long-term in a gravity-free environment. Today, amazingly, we do have one laboratory that can test the physical properties of quartz compounds without the influences of pressure and gravity, and that laboratory is the Physical Sciences Lab on the International Space Station. Closed is physical sciences test number 392, the softening of granite. This package contains a 2 kilogram block of granite and a 2 kilogram container of petroleum and an empty coffee cup. Here are the instructions. Place the 2 kilogram granite block into your pressure vessel and close it. Then transfer the petroleum into the closed pressure vessel via the liquids transfer port. Apply 6 atmospheres of vacuum. Once minus 6 atmospheres is achieved, tune the contact harmonics to 32.768 Hz, which is the most common natural frequency of natural forming quartz crystals, SiO2. Set the timer for 2 weeks, and then walk away as the saying goes. But for you, just float away. That's it. Pretty simple. We cannot do this experiment here within Earth's gravity, as gravity has a stabilizing effect on a lot of elements and compounds, especially the metalloids and reactive non-metal compounds like SiO2, quartz. The intent of this experiment is to utilize the zero gravity, a vacuum, 
and the harmonics to confuse the valence electrons of the quartz in the granite. This will alter the physical state of the stone without increasing its temperature or its physical volume. After two weeks of exposure to the sonics and to the negative pressure in the vessel, release the vacuum, turn off the tone, and poke the stone through the transfer port with your micro spatula. If the stone is not soft all the way through, reapply the pressure and the tone and set the timer for another two weeks. Keep the frequency at the same hertz. Continue to apply at least minus six atmospheres or more, but do not deviate from that frequency. Do this until you can press your spatula all the way through that stone. Once a completely softened stone is achieved, remove the petroleum via the liquid transfer pump and remove the softened stone from the pressure vessel. Place it into your kinetic scale and let it spin just long enough to get a weight reading. The softened granite cube's weight will be much less than its original weight, possibly one-tenth and maybe even less. The softened stone will weigh much less because the quartz in the compound is now exhibiting its gaseous, molecular weight while still being confused in its solid compound state. Remove it from the centrifugal scale and place it onto a work tray and measure all of its physical properties. Temperature, size, color. Then cut it in half and press one half into the included ceramic coffee cup. Pick up the other half of the granite cube and shape it into anything you creatively desire. Make a cute bunny rabbit if you like, or work it into a shape of a small vase with handles on both sides, or just roll it into a perfect sphere. The choice is yours. Then place that shaped item and the granite-filled coffee cup back into the centrifugal scale and let it spin at 1G. It's not certain how quickly the granite will return to its fully hardened natural state, but the reading on your kinetic scale will slowly return back to its original weight of 2 kilograms, plus the added weight of the coffee cup. At that point, you can turn the kinetic scale off, both items will be granted again, take note of the time that it took for both items to return to their full weight and hardness, make your observations, check the stone in the cup, you will find that it did not shrink at all. This is because it did not lose water at all. There wasn't a cooling process or a chemical change. Simply a hardening process once it was exposed to the gravity in the centrifugal scale. I hope that you will make a small stone vase and that you will put some small handles onto it. A granite bunny would be great too, but an actual granite vase with small handles would be priceless because here on Earth, with gravity, we simply cannot do that. This experiment is very important because it would prove that the softening of granite requires a zero-gravity environment. Thus, the many examples of softened granite here on Earth would be proof that gravity-breaking devices have previously existed here on Earth. Think about that for a moment. Egypt and Peru and other locations proof that gravity can be broken. Huge heavy stones can be lifted, transported, and softened like clay. Except it's not clay. It's granite. Granite that hardens back to granite over time. The tech is no longer here, but the stonework remains. Clues and the proof of what is possible. Currently, trillions upon trillions of dollars and an unimaginable amount of resources are being spent to learn more about limitless energy, fusion, and particle theory. But it's not working. Why isn't it working? Well, any fusion reactors or particle theory scientist would agree that gravity plays a huge part in these theories. Gravity is the problem and that it's time to move these trillion-dollar projects out into space, out into zero-g. But that is physically impossible given their immense size. Yet funds are not being spent to figure out gravity. We don't want gravity. Gravity is bad. Gravity is a constant. It's unchangeable. But if Egypt and Peru are proof that gravity can be broken, and possibly then controlled, then let's throw our money at solving gravity first, then apply what we learn from that to hadron particle theory and to fusion reactors. Simply, hadron colliders and fusion reactors will not deliver a solution as to how to break gravity, but controlling gravity will make it possible for both hadron colliders and fusion reactors to finally work properly. Breaking gravity is the now. It should be our number one. 
That is why Experiment 392 is so important now. Two years ago, in 2021, when I first started working on this video, I searched all over the NASA website to see if they were doing any zero-gravity experiments on metalloid and reactive non-metal compounds, specifically quartz. There were 391 experiments overall at that time, 391, but none of them were about quartz and harmonics under varying atmospherics. Mostly they have been about making life possible over the long term in a microgravity environment, plants, people, reproduction, etc. So I clicked on to the contact us and wrote to NASA several times actually. I left all my information. What NASA is doing is incredible. I highly recommend that a curious person visit then favorite their site and then spend as much time as possible watching and learning from the various videos and tasks and blogs and challenges that are now available to us all. The International Space Station is a global long-term adventure that is impossible to properly describe in any small amount of time. NASA.gov is engaging, educational, transparent, and amazing. And again, I encourage you to go to www.nasa.gov and simply just get started. Yet with all that work and study, the unspoken truth learned in the last 20 years is that we cannot survive in space long-term, without gravity. So, although gravity is bad, a long-distance endeavor will die without it. And centrifugal force is not the answer, unless, of course, you can spin the entire farm. Yes, cattle, crops, soil, all of it. No, that's not going to happen. True sustainability is not just the kitchen and a freezer. We are not going to get very far, nor for very long, without artificial gravity. NASA is also filled with sci-fi fans, Trekkies, Star Wars fans, and all of them can visualize and do realize that artificial gravity has to happen. It has to, with people walking, talking, drinking, living, all within artificial gravity. It has been done here on Earth. The proof is in the megalithic softened stones. So let's get busy with Experiment 392. Is it crazy to think that the neutrons, protons, and electrons of some of these elements will behave and bond differently without the unifying force of gravity? And how about our most common compounds, like quartz? Yes, it's time to start some long-term tests on some not-so-obvious combinations of our already interesting elements. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. I hope that I've earned your like and subscription. It's your subscription that makes it possible for me to continue with these videos. And I have some very interesting topics coming up. Always keep an open mind.